Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, we've made it back. Look Hooray! at this. It's like nothing ever happened. Yeah. We're here. We've made it. It's podcast time. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the oh, Wolf Den baby. Podcast. You thought we forgot, but we didn't. No. No. How could how could we forget? No. We forgot for two whole weeks. Yes. Well, because you... Just slipped our minds. <laughs> you, you were off... Uh, I was on the other side the of world. the planet. Yeah. I brought some things. Oh, did you now? Uh, first of all, look at this Donkey Kong Game & Watch. I've been looking oh. for this. Here it is. Ooh. Spent $94 on Jesus it. Jesus Christ. I don't want to touch it. Touch it and realize mm. the screen's broken. Oh. <laughs> And I doubt this is the type of thing that you can fix. It's it's on. Look at that. Yeah, I put batteries in it. Okay. Uh, to realize how bad it is. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's pretty bad. Oh, man, that's a shame. Uh, I believe this is the first time a D-pad was ever? It is the first ever D-pad, yes. which is why I wanted it so yes. bad. I also thought $94 was a good deal, and it would be if, if the, the screen, screen worked. Broken, yeah. That was the only thing I got in Akihabara. Really? Akihabara? Big scam. Really? That's going to be my Ooh. video about how much of a scam Ooh. Akihabara is. Everything's so expensive. Yeah. All the cool shit I bought, not in Akihabara. Right. For example, I got a Game Boy Advance SP. Yes. That I then uh, I gutted did, and did a whole I thing to. I did see this. I do like the nice clear case and mm -hmm. the little Wolf Den logo you put on it. Yeah, that I, I threw it in a little bracket. Is this an original battery or is this a... Uh... That is the original battery. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's bright blue. Cause I, Japanese battery. Okay, because I was gonna say like I've replaced the battery on our SP and that was green. Okay, so. I thought it was white. I don't know. I think it was green. It's probably it's you're probably right. Maybe it's one of those things where like they had different colors for it and you have to you like, know collect what? them all or something. The DS Lite is is white. Okay, that's where that's where I'm getting my brain at. Got but it. no, the mod requires you to put a piece of foam there. Okay, and that would look bad on a clear back. So I yeah. decided to print a little wolf logo. So I thought that'd be better. Uh, anyway, I got you something that Aww. I refused to uh, show you. That's true. He gave, now. he got my wife a uh, nice little notebook. He got my kids a puzzle, and he got me. Ooh, oh, it's Robin and Ace the Bat Hound. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, look at that. It's so cute. It's Dude, so do you cute. have it? That makes it I, the sounds I, you're making. Is I that don't. You have I don't it? have it. I don't have it. So that. Uh, Look at the what's the what's the price say? Uh, seventy one fifty yen. Yeah, so that's like fifty bucks. Yeah, that was on Amazon for a hundred and thirty five or something. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I thought that was a good deal. That is a good deal, and, and I think it's metal. It's Kotobukiya, who mm -hmm. will definitely be at Comic Con next week, and I'm sure they're gonna uh, charge an arm and a leg for the same. You thing. should see how much it is. I should. They have a store in Akihabara, so yes. I guess. That's it. toys are a good the, yeah. toys are a good deal yes. over there. They they do a lot of toy stuff. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, but for video games, no. I wonder if this go was anywhere scale else. with my McFarland stuff. All right, that's another topic okay. for another time. Was, All right. Anyways. Uh, anyway, we got a lot of things to talk about. Yes. Before we do that, I didn't pull up Streamlabs. So what are we talking about? Uh, what are we talking about? Well, it's October now. It's spooky season. But apparently Spooky. this month um, is a very good month for video games. There's a lot of stuff coming out. A lot out. of games coming out this month. Mm -hmm. uh, you will not be able to play all of them, so you will have to pick and choose. Um, but I'm we're going to go I'm through... Still, I got a huge backlog. We're going to go through all the big ones uh, that are coming out this month. Uh, and there's there's a lot of good shit. But before, uh, oh well, well, there's other stuff. We there's other stuff. There's a lot going on the, with. The, uh, remember the Xbox leak that oh, yeah. happened two we weeks ago? Got, we never got to talk about it, and now is our chance to talk about it. The big Xbox leak. Uh, there's a lot going on with Knights of the Old Republic, uh, both the remake and the Switch Two, the Switch version of Kotor Two. Uh, there, it, there have been big time layoffs at Epic Games. Uh, we got. Uh, two high-profile departures from two major gaming companies. Yes, uh, within the span like of a week. To back. Yes, uh, Capcom said some things about game prices and then proceeded to uh, announce it was releasing an expensive game uh, and more. Okay, but uh, first, but first, before you even do what I know you're gonna do. Okay, will Wolf damn it subscribed <laughs> only two months in a row, which means that he fucked up. No, I it's every <laughs> month, and you know that. 
Hey, Wolf Bros. Welcome back. I was afraid Will had gotten too used to watching only murders in the building on Tuesday nights and would forget to show up. It Is was it was nice because the show comes out on Tuesday and I would get to watch it on the day. And like it's such a good show. I'm interested in that show. It's a very good show. It's How many very seasons fun. are there? Three. It's a lot. It, they're like half hour episodes. They go by quick. It's, it's very funny. It's cozy. It's a cozy show. I think I think they're funny people. Yeah. I'd like to watch it. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Fox, thanks for the 15 months. Yay, the podcast is back. I guess I'll have to pause my Wolf Den live binge for a little bit. <laughs> also, hello to the other Caleb Fox. I'm I am still shocked, shocked you exist. What the hell? Yeah, remember there were two Caleb Foxes who both happened to watch this show? That's wacky. That is insane. That's fucked up. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> One of you has to leave. <laughs> um. All right. We got news to talk about, but first we gotta talk about yes. the, the 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 games with the, there's a oh, lot. No, not games with gold. No, I was I it, was looking games... at this these notes two seconds yeah. ago, and I was like, he forgot the games with gold. No, because games with gold is dead. <laughs> it's now We're done it's, with it's it. It's now Game Pass Core. No, those games will be there for a while. We'll we'll update those when they add the new games. Um, but it's you know August October has begun, so now uh, Sony is giving you some. Three more games to play for free if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus, uh, which I am not anymore. I canceled my subscription. I was telling you, just log in to mine because I have the premium. I know, but like... At the and, rate, I, and I never use it. And the, I have it until February. At the rate I'm going, like like Spider-Man comes out at the end of the mm -hmm. month, spoiler alert. And once that comes out, that's going to be my one game to like God knows when. True. So... Okay. But uh, anyway, PlayStation Plus... These are the free games you get. Starting today, you can download them today. Uh, it includes the Callisto Protocol on PS4, uh, PS4 and PS5. Farming Simulator 22 on PS4 and PS5. Oh, okay. And Weird West on PS4 and PS5. Weird West. I'm, 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 deal, I'm, deal, I'm, do, I'm juggling two computers at once right okay. now. They don't give you pictures? They give you the, the one, the main graphic up top. Oh, yeah. It has all the pictures that I need. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't remember Weird West. Uh, I've heard of Weird West. Discover a dark fantasy reimagining of the Wild West where lawmen and gunslingers share the frontier with fantastical creatures, each playing with their own rules and their own particular mo uh, motives in this isometric action RPG. The game supports different styles of play in a simulated sandbox uh, world where characters, factions, and even places react to the player's decisions, and players are faced with brutal choices and consequences that can't be undone, including death. This looks like Baldur's Gate, but <laughs> but west, but west, and weird. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, I've I've heard good things about Weird West. Like nothing over the moon about it, mm -hmm. but like I've heard. I've heard people like it. Uh, I've heard that people don't like the Callisto Protocol. No, that was the game that was uh, a spiritual successor to Dead Space. Right? Yes, it and had it was like made by the guys who made Dead Space. Correct. They like left EA. They formed their own company because EA didn't want to make Dead Space anymore. And so then they did. And then EA <laughs> made Dead Space. And people actually liked their Dead Space. Yeah, that was messed up. Everyone was like, "Fuck EA's Dead Space. It's going to be trash." Everybody get the Callisto Protocol. And then the Callisto Protocol sucked, and everybody yeah. liked the new Dead Space. Yeah. So okay. I'm not interested in any of these. Farming simulator? Farm, maybe. Maybe. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Simulators are in. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Dad came over and planted tulips today. Oh, did he? Yeah, and then he yelled at me for all the bushes having weeds in them. <laughs> I pay a I pay a company uh -huh. to weed and they don't do anything but the lawn. Right. So I have weeds in the cracks. Maybe I'll play Farming Simulator. Yeah, yeah you'll learn Instead how to... of doing my own yeah. lawn. He told me he was going to uh, put fertilizer down on my lawn after I mowed on Sunday. Mm -hmm. He then proceeds to tell me he will do it next week. The problem is, next week, my wife is going on a little girl's trip and I'm going to be alone with the kids. So I don't know when he expects me to mow the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Kindly ask him to mow the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh wait no we did that oh we have a we have a rare wacky wild Nintendo yes that's right service game not only are we getting PlayStation games now but Nintendo decided to just go hey guess what Kirby and the Amazing Mirror Switch Online plus expansion pack there you go 
I love a good Game Boy Advance game. Yes, I like when we get Game Boy Advance It's always stuff. nice to see. Uh, it's a Kirby game. Those are usually good. Those are usually, I don't want to say kitty games, but boring. they're... Boring, <laughs> easy, easy mode they, baby they games. They scale on the easier side. Yeah. I'm not thrilled with Kirby stuff. Kir I, I know Kirby's got great games, mm -hmm. but they're, they're fucking too easy. <laughs> the only Kirby game I... Th there's two Kirby games I thoroughly enjoyed. Right. Canvas Curse? Yes. Because that one wasn't that easy. No, that I was going to say that one's probably my favorite one. And the other one, I, I don't think you played... Uh, the golf Forgot one? Forgotten Land. Oh, the golf one's good. Yeah. There's three Kirby games that I like. <laughs> I've played Forgotten Land. Not the whole thing, but I played a little bit of it. And I do like the golf one. So, uh, Forgotten Land, I think I only liked it as much as I did because I, I played it where if I got one hit, I just right. insta-died. Uh, that made it more like it, like a, like a, like a freaking Souls game. Yeah. Uh, this might be good to play with four people. Yeah. This might be a good little co-op game to play. Uh, otherwise... I'm not interested. Why are they showing it in the trailer as having split screen? Uh, it doesn't have split. Like no, you don't have to show that. No, I think that's just their way of showing that it's four players. But there, there's clearly four players on the screen. Isn't that just how? Isn't that just uh, how the multiplayer works? Like it shows all the people in the game on the side. It shows all the people in the game on the side. There's yes. this. Yeah. 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 I mean, the only, in every shot, all of the people are on the screen at right. once. So they could have just made one of these corners full screen. There was no reason to do that. I don't know, the only, the only There's one shot where each person has a unique screen. This one. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't know, man. I'll have to take that up with Nintendo's PR firm. Very weird. Very strange. Uh, that would be cool to try. Multiplayer. Yeah. That's how the game is? Is it split screen like that? It's a Game Boy game. Yeah. So many no, I don't, games think, I don't split think it's split screen. screen no, like I think everybody gets their own screen. You're making me break my brain. <laughs> uh... I think that's what it shows like when you're doing multiplayer. I would I would hate that. That would yeah. suck so much if, if I have to see other people's screens. Especially like you got to remember like on a Game Boy, you had a small screen back then. Yeah. So that would have been awful if it was split screen. Well, yeah. I'd imagine in, on a real Game Boy, yeah. it's not like that. So why would it be like that on Nintendo Switch Online? That would be yeah. very dumb. Um, also, it looked like the, the shit. No, it can't be like that. That's impossible because yeah. all of the shit on the side. Where is it? There it is. Look, all the shit on the side. That, that yeah. doesn't happen when there's split screen in the game. Right. So it's probably just a multiplayer session and they're showing everyone else's. Yeah, they're doing it for the trailer. That's, yeah. that's so dumb, though. Anyway, uh, I'd only play that for multiplayer. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not. Uh, it's right. probably an easy baby game. But I'm, I'm glad to see more Game Boy Advance games. Yes. Uh, let's talk about all of the stuff that's coming out this, yes. this month. Uh, so yeah, it's October. It's a lot of games coming out. I'll, I'll read through the list and for the big ones, I'll stop and I'll actually read the description okay. of it. Um, is so it, this is via Kotaku. Yes. They had like the, the most games on like the list of the most games coming out. Mm -hmm. Um, Blinken's Folly, October 2nd for PS4, PS5, Switch, and Windows. The Lamplighters League, October 3rd on Xbox Series, uh, Xbox One and Windows. Uh, Disgaea 7, Vows of the Virtuous, October 3rd. Silent Hope 3, uh, that's coming to Switch and Windows. Scorn, October 3rd, uh, coming to PS5. Uh, I have to hit continue reading. Oh, yeah. Scorn. Scorn. Oh, yeah. This that, came out. Yeah, that's that's been out on Xbox and PC, and now it's coming to PS5. This game. Uh, it's the gross game. It's a gross game. Yeah. I don't know. How I, I heard it was good. Yeah, I've heard it's very good. It's it's, it's just gross. Yeah. Uh, Station to Station, October third on Windows. Assassin's Creed Mirage, October fifth. PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and Windows. Uh, the the if, only interesting uh, uh, Assassin's Creed game. 
in a long time. In a long time, yeah. yeah. If Assassin's Creed, as of late, uh, felt too different from the original concept of sneaky parkour action in urban settings, you may wish to check out Assassin's Creed Mirage. It's not hard to look at Mirage and get those early AC vibes. It really does give off early AC vibes. When is this coming to iOS? Uh, That's a good question. Not anytime soon. I think Resident Evil 4 is going to be the first, like, modern console game to come to ios what about seven eight eight what about eight probably after that i do want to try games on on ios yeah i want to try that out especially so. with USB C and everything yeah that'll... you can plug it into a monitor you could yeah just pl- you could just plug your iphone into a monitor yeah. and just play the game that's like that. crazy yeah uh next front mission 2 remake also october 5th on switch okay Front I didn't Mission know this 2, was happening. Front Mission 2 returns from 1997 as a remake on the Switch. This new release marks the first time Front Mission 2 will hit markets outside of Japan, uh, featuring tactical mech ma- uh, smashing strategy in a near future scenario. Okay, that's so, yeah. pretty cool. So if you have a Switch and you want to play a game, it's not, you can't play Assassin's Creed Mirage, but you can play Front Mission 2. How much is Front Mission 2 remake? Uh, do not know. $50. No? It's on sale for $31.49. <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah. yeah considering how much everything's been lately yeah. also october 5th war groove 2 switch and windows so that war groove is like the it's it's like the uh the advanced wars yes. because advanced wars didn't have a new game for 20 years right so this was right. the filler but then advanced wars came back yes <laughs> uh dark picture anthology little hope also october 5th coming to switch uh detective pikachu returns october 6th on switch this game looks like dog shit (laughs) he's back pikachu has some new mysteries to solve on detective pikachu returns coming october 6th to the switch uh look man i don't know what to tell you people like detective pikachu there's no lighting (laughs) the game has no lighting at all that's that's the this generation is the staple of this generation is lighting and there's not even any in this game. I was watching uh, the no clip documentary that they just put out on the Burger King games, the Xbox oh. Burger King games. Okay, and it was very interesting. But I noticed in Big Bumpin', the bumper car <laughs> game, okay, on the floor, there's like light reflection on it, and it's like this is an early Xbox 360 game, and it had made for Burger King, <laughs> and it had very good light reflection on the floor. The rest of the game looked like trash, of course. Those games were, what, $3? $4, yeah. And they were not bad for $4 for $4 games. Dollar In a game, world of $60 games, yeah. they were not bad. Yeah. It, the Probably the worst one is the most famous one, Sneak King. But, like, the the novelty of that alone, like, really helped push that game Yeah, no, the that, that's yeah. the whole fun of it is that yeah. it's a shitty sneaking game. Yeah. People pay good money these days for... for purposely shitty games yes like five nights at freddy's yes <laughs> um uh snacks sword art online last recollection october 6th ps4 ps5 xbox series xbox one and windows borderlands 3 october 6th coming to the switch you can just skip that one <laughs> roblox everybody's favorite game is coming to ps4 and ps5 really? october 10th yes wait that's a huge deal yes it's coming to consoles roblox the long-running free-to-play child distraction tool is making its ps playstation console debut oh, on october 10th i'm going through these trailers without showing them on screen uh i'm interested in roblox because of the 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 the, the engine and, yeah and, and and how other people make games in in roblox yeah i'd like somebody to give me like a full walkthrough of roblox like well yeah exactly yeah. as far as i know like from an outsider's perspective it doesn't seem like a game it just seems like a tool to make games that also happens to be a game yeah i don't know what the game is yeah I just know that it is a an engine to yeah. to to make up. I know games. there's a Sonic the Hedgehog game in it, officially yes. licensed by Sega. That's as far yes. as I get. Uh, Forza, Forza Motorsport ten. Uh, sorry, Forza Motorsport. Uh, just Forza Motorsport. October tenth. Xbox Series X and S and Windows. This will be my new benchmark for Game The Pass. latest in the long running series of racing games from Xbox Game Studio, Forza Motorsport returns on October tenth with over five hundred cars and twenty locations. 
featuring very track layouts. The game also boasts more than 800 performance upgrades. I expect to see this in a lot of videos where I'm using a Windows handheld or something. I expect to see this in a lot of videos where anybody's testing a Windows yeah. handheld or an Xbox or a TV or something. It's just that it's probably going to be pretty system heavy, but it's just that racing games always look the best. Yeah. And Forza, you know, it prides itself on being super realistic. Yeah. And this is Forza Motorsport. So it's like the more sim based Forza game. Will it be a uh, 4K 120 frames on the Series X? Ooh, that's a good question. I would. I would have, this would have to be a game that would be 4K 120 because it's a flagship series. Run at a locked 4K 60, okay. but won't have a 120 option on Xbox Series X. Pushing the power of the Xbox Series X, Forza Motorsport will run at a locked 4K resolution and 60 frames per second, delivering a high fidelity and super smooth racing experience. Okay. That's disappointing. Uh, I'd imagine that uh, PC will be unlocked. Probably. So... Uh, the the uh, ROG Ally has a 120 hertz screen, okay. I think. So that that might that'd be interesting to see yeah. how, how that pushes. I I think when they demoed the ROG Ally, they were doing a Forza Horizon at uh, 80 frames per second, which okay. is still pretty yeah, huge pretty for great, a handheld. Yeah. The Lenovo thing that's coming out uh, is 140 hertz or something. Yeah. So. None of these systems are going to make it no. up to that high. Uh, Little Gator game, October 11th, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, and Xbox One. Uh, Total War Pharaoh, also October 11th on Windows. Yeah, that's an ugly guy. Uh, Honkai Star Rail, October 11th, PS4, PS5, Little Windows. Little interested. Android and iOS. Little interested in um, Honkai Star Rail. Oh, no, wait. No, I'm not. What's the <laughs> one? Ho HoYoVerse is making like a... Like a like a cyberpunk game. This is uh, MiHoYo's ultra popular RPG phenomenon arriving on PlayStation and Windows and mobile. Yeah, it's the people who did a. Uh, what did I say? HoYoVerse. Yeah. MiHoYo, whatever. It's I think it's the same company. Okay. Uh, they have a cyberpunk one. Okay. That I, that I want to try. Uh, River City Rival Showdowns, October 11th, PC, October 12th on PS4 and Switch. Uh, with the reimagining 2.5D-esque visuals, River City Rival Showdown brings the 89 NES classic beat em up to the 21st century. This time, you'll hit the rough streets of River City to explore new stories and a new fighting mode, Double Dragon Duel 2023. I think this looks cool. Yeah. I like the idea of this. Yeah. I, I like the uh, style of... Um... Uh, Octopath Traveler. Yeah, and I like that people are mimicking it. I just hate that type of game. I know <laughs> you so, see that in games you actually like. Yeah, exactly. So it's good as coming here. Uh, Batman Arkham Trilogy for Switch got delayed till December first. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, Lords of the Fallen. Wait, it did. It did. Yeah, it says October thirteenth. Yeah, but it's it supposed to come got... out October thirteenth. Today, earlier today, they announced they had to delay it to December first. It might not actually come out. It's probably because Arkham Knight, you know, was notoriously very uh fickle back when it launched yeah it didn't even work on pc it didn't work at pc yeah so yeah. they're probably having a lot of trouble with that yeah i could imagine so we'll see we'll see if it comes out uh lords of the fallen october 13th ps5 xbox series and windows spongebob squarepants the cosmic shake october 16th ps5 xbox series skull island rise of kong october 17th PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows. Skull Island Rise of Kong is a third-person action-adventure game based on the legendary King Kong franchise, exploring the origins of Kong while letting you bash the crap out of dinosaurs. I read the whole description of that game because apparently this already has a cult following. It's not even out yet. Oh. Like people are I mean, like people like King Kong. People like reason. King Kong. Yeah, yeah, people like the idea of, like, you know, big monkey beating up dinosaurs i get it but like i just didn't think like specifically a king kong game in the year of our lord 2023 would like grab people the way it has on like you know certain niche corners of the internet there's a thing around monster fighting games and mm -hmm. stuff and there's not many games like that no you get your occasional god godzilla game. godzilla godzilla sorry <laughs> gojira you just came back. From I just came back yeah. from. <laughs> uh, I get, saw him. He you was get, cool. You get your occasional Gojira <laughs> game. You get, you know, we used to get Rampage. We used to get like War of the Monsters and King of the Monsters from SNK. Um, but yeah, that I feel like that's a genre that people could really get into. I guess, you know, Skull Island is filling that void. Yeah. 
Who wouldn't want to be a big, powerful, I know, scary right? monster? Uh, Sonic Superstars is a big deal game. Also, this is probably is this the first game that I'm actually going to play? Probably. <laughs> it is also coming out October 17th. PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows. Uh, Sonic Superstars is a 2.5D side scroller featuring Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy as they endeavor to take on Dr. Eggman yet again. Uh, I heard it runs on at 60 on Switch. That's good. good. I th- it's low resolution, though, I think. It's right. Like 720 or something? Yeah. Which, which is, is fine. fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm still skeptical it's going to run that good on, yeah. on, on, on Switch. Yeah, because the past few Sonic games on Switch have been butt. They've done some weird, questionable things. Yeah. So this will be a Steam purchase for yeah. me, for sure. Um, also, because it has no local... I mean, it has no online multiplayer. Yeah. Or the way that you play online is like weird. So It's not co-op. Yeah, so if I wanted to play with other people, use Steam and use Steam Link or whatever it's yeah. called. Steam Remote Play or whatever the hell. Um, yeah, but it looks good. Excited for that. I am interested. I, oh, I I became interested. I think we've talked about this before. I became more interested when I learned that it is the same physics as Sonic Mania. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Also October 17th, Wizard with a Gun. PS5, this is a cool concept. PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, Switch, and Windows. Um, you're a wizard, so here's a gun. That's it. <laughs> Online competitive play and the ability to customize your own magical guns and bullets. You'll get to fire them at baddies across procedurally generated levels. Can I see gameplay? The... Is there no gameplay in the trailer? Oh, there it is. Okay. Looks like a weird uh, cult of the lamp. Yeah. Uh, then the next day, October 18th, is Hellboy Web of Weird. PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows. With an art style that aims to capture the spirit of the comics, Web of Weird is a roguelike brawler that tells an original story woven from the independent narrative sections. Uh, Hellboy himself is voiced by the late Lance Reddick. This looks awesome. It does. However, Uh-oh. there have been two previous Hellboy games, Asylum Seeker and Seeds of Destruction. Both games have been hot trash. Mm-hmm. So I do not have high hopes for this game. I know that Lance Reddick is playing Hellboy, and that's that's a great get. But Seeds of Destruction had the cast of the good Hellboy movies in it: Ron Perlman, Selma Blair, uh, Doug Jones, all reprising their roles as Hellboy, uh, Liz, and Abe Sabian. And they even got Bruce Campbell to play Lobster Johnson. Oh, but the game was still trash. Yeah. So Hellboy does not have a good history in video games. I'm sorry to be that guy, but somebody just got... looks very good. It looks great, but. Sometimes if a game looks amazing yeah. and is bad, <laughs> it carries it, it a helps. little. Like, yeah. I'm, like I'm willing to put up with it because it just looks mm-hmm. really nice. Like the Order 1886. That was I some... liked that game, but, but it wasn't like yeah. an amazing game. Yeah, That's something they said in the, the Burger King games documentary. When they made, not to, go, not to talk about this the whole time, but it was very good. No clip. Um, <laughs> they said when they, when they kept... Sh- when they were making it, they didn't have like the textures on or anything. It was just like, you know, gray models walking through a gray void or whatever. And they said it was the most boring thing, but they kept having to show it to, you know, the Burger King people first before they got all the artwork approved. Cause they did that last. And then when they finally put all the artwork and visuals on it, then it started to feel like a good game. Cause yeah. It actually made sense. Yeah. And that's an unfortunate thing about video games is that uh, if it has to look nice, it's it's one of the only mediums where it has to look nice or else it's not people aren't going to like See, it. But that's the problem, though, because like we can we say all the time that like graphics don't make the game right. like a game can have bad graphics and still be good. But then a game comes along that looks phenomenal and like it just that whole notion gets thrown out the window because you just play with the shiny object the whole time. I think when when I say a game doesn't have to look good to be good or, or a game doesn't have that fancy graphics, I usually mean I don't need a high frame rate and a high resolution. Right. Or like ray tracing. It needs an art style. Right. That's what Nintendo is really good at. Yeah. But I mean, like, I could play like a PS2 game or like a N64 game with, you know, comparatively bad graphics compared to what we have now and still get enjoyment out of it. But they have a style that looks good. I guess. You know? Yeah. I mean, Mario 64, that's an, that's kind of an ugly game. Yeah. But Mario looks good. It does have, know? it has character. It has yeah. style. Like, what's an ugly game that is fun to play? Ugly game that is fun. Chess. Chess. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, 
Now I'm trying to think. Like, I can't think of much, many ugly games. Yeah. Like, N+, plus, that's not that ugly. Yeah. You know? If it was uglier, I might not want to play it. Yeah. So, I get it. Starfield? No. No. Doesn't no. count. Uh, okay. Oh, Wood. Wood's in the chat. Welcome hey, back. Wood. I, the I know, oh, I know Wood. I know oh. you don't like Starfield. I'm sorry, buddy. I've okay. been playing it. How do you I'm feel play, about I'm, it? I'm playing it like, like uh, it's like a nighttime activity for yeah. me. I, I lay in bed. I boot it up. I'll go find a place to sell all my equipment, and then I'll go to sleep. And right. I'll wake, <laughs> and then the next day, I'll lay in bed. I'll go talk to one guy, and then go to sleep. Like, yeah. I play it like an hour at a time, and yeah. it's 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 fine. Okay. Like, like uh, I do, I am enjoying the combat a little bit where uh, I'm trying to do things like really stealth. Yeah. But you end up just trying to break the game in weird ways. But yeah, for yeah. some reason, that's kind of fun. So, so I know because I know it's not a great game, and there's a lot that frustrates me yeah. about it. But I am playing it more than I expected to. So, cool. I have at my nine to five, I have two bosses, and it's convenient because one boss is a PlayStation guy, and the other boss is an Xbox guy. Oh. And the Xbox guy refuses to download Starfield because it takes up too much memory on his Xbox. It's like 150 gigs or whatever. I had to put a whole new SSD in my ally. Yeah. He went out and bought the uh, the memory expansion card just for Starfield. Yeah. Like, I don't want to play it. But I convinced both of them to play Hitman 3. Oh. Because I sold them on that. And they were like, this sounds amazing. So <laughs> I'll report back. I go back in the office tomorrow. I'll see what I I need to play Hitman. It's that's so my good. type of game, I but I've never finished, played any of them. I just finished Hitman 3. Well, I got one more level and then I'll be done with it. It's so good, dude. It's inc- it's those games are so good. Is that on Game Pass? It is not. It's unfortunate. I thought it was. It should be. I think it got removed. I think it was at one point. Might have been. Was because like I think some of them might have been, but then they like combined them all into one game. Uh, and okay. It's a whole thing. But I think it's on sale on PlayStation. So okay, it That's might cool. be on PlayStation Plus Premium. I don't think it is. I know it is on PlayStation. You can download the first level of Hitman 3, the Dubai level, and play uh, that for free. Okay. So you, you could try that. I'll just play that over and over again. Yeah. I mean, you can. There's like a thousand ways to like beat the level. All right. Back on track. Cavern of Dreams, October 19th on Windows. A what Nintendo, is this? A Nintendo 64 style game. A 3D platformer, Caravan, uh, Ca- Cavern of Dreams, features varied gameplay scenarios and nostalgia-inducing graphics. There we go. Ugly-ass game. <laughs> Hitman Collection on Game Pass. That might be the PS2 games. Oh. So, like, Blood Money. No, isn't it 1 and 2? Isn't the collection 1 and 2? No. Oh. I think that's Blood Money Absolution. Absolution's a good game, though. Okay. This N64 game looks looks cute. Yeah. Uh, the Seventh Guest VR, October 19th, Endless Dungeon, October 19th, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Windows, Gargoyles Remastered, October 19th, PS4, oh PS5, God. Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, Windows. Uh, okay. It's the uh, join up with Goliath and Co. To, uh, with the return of Gargoyles, originally released on the Genesis and Super Nintendo in 1995. Remake fe- features updated visuals, animation, sound design, as well as new uh, rewind mode. Notably hard game to emulate, right? Yeah, because at least the Genesis version, I don't think it came out on, on SNES. Um, so good journalism, Kotaku. Um, <laughs> the Genesis version actually works because of a bug in the Genesis hardware. And a lot of emulators and even like the Genesis Model 3 don't have that bug. Mm. so without that bug you can't run that game so you just couldn't play it on a model 3 exactly <laughs> also uh not the best game i don't like i don't <laughs> think this is like something people are clamoring for. i think it's just one of those games like gargoyles has a big cult following so i think it's one of those things like if you fucking love gargoyles you fucking love this game i think people like gargoyles because uh fetish i mean gargoyles are hot they are no they are hot gargoyles <laughs> but like you know for a disney remember disney made this mm-hmm. so, and it was like very mature for a disney saturday morning cartoon because okay. like they were very stoic and serious and they like would bleed and like there's one episode where the main human character gets shot oh my god <laughs> so yeah it was like very for a disney show okay so uh, inescapable, no rules, no rescue. October nineteenth. We're PS4. only up to no, October nineteenth. Yeah, uh, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and Windows. 
Uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed Turbo Charge. Also October 19th. PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, Switch, and Windows. I never got to do the Hot Wheels uh, DLC for uh, Forza. Is it still available? Yeah. It's in, I think it's part, yeah, it's part yeah. of Game Pass. Uh, Cat Tales Wild, Wildwood Story, October 20th on Windows. Marvel Spider-Man 2, October 20th, PS5. The follow-up to Insomniac's lauded open-world Spider-Man action adventure is back. With an even grander scope, the sequel features both Peter Parker and Miles Morales, more, more than 65 different suits, an expanded map, and featuring Brooklyn and Queens. How excited are you for this game? I am very excited for this game. I am not that interested. Really? Yeah, I wasn't like that crazed about the other Spider-Man games. It was like, okay. Like I had an okay See, game. like... I like I, I remember playing it. I remember enjoying it. And like the more and more I got into it, the more and more I realized like it was something different. It was something special. I want to say okay. like they were actually trying to tell a I don't I don't want to use this term. They were trying to tell a movie st- quality story inside a Spider Man game, which has traditionally not been. They have not been as dramatic and earnest and serious as this game was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I do think the story of Spider-Man PS4 is on par with, like, the Sam Raimi movies and, like, the best of, like, Spider-Man stories. I think okay. it was that well told and that well done. And I'm excited to see, like, what they do with this game, not only with the addition of Miles and Peter, but also Venom. Because... Like, I know they've been doing good stuff with Venom in the comics, but it's been a very long time since we got a big budget mainstream good Venom story. Yeah, Venom in games hasn't had a good uh, uh, situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, he's been more like a gimmick, almost like, and there's a lot you can do with Venom, especially like early Venom stories. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how this plays out. Okay. So, yeah. But. That's okay, because there's another game coming out the same fucking day. It's Super Mario Brothers Wonder oh, on Switch. Oh, fuck that game. Not interested <laughs> at all. Get out of here. We're playing Mario Wonder, baby. Woo! Uh, Smush Mushroom Kingdom is looking really trippy in Super Mario Wonder. Uh, starring eight playable characters with local multiplayer. The game features new Wonder Flowers that bring dynamic changes to the environment. Other new items include the elephant fruit, which transforms you into an elephant. We're all in. We're all yes, in on Mario this, Wonder, baby. This game looks good. Sorry, I won't be playing it. <laughs> I got asked by PlayStation if I want, if I was going to cover uh, Spider-Man, oh, yeah? and I said no. Really? Yeah. I, I can't like make a video about it, you know? How, how would you not be able to make a video about it? Spider-Man? Yeah. How would I make a video about Sp- Spider-Man? When was the last time I made a video on a game? True. Gee, I don't know. If only you knew somebody who used to make videos about comic book characters on the internet. To well, help if make you a were on the channel, Spider-Man. I would have said yes. <laughs> hey, I got I got Spider Man panels. If you, if you... <laughs> no, no, thank you very much. Uh, I'm excited for Wonder. I'll be playing that. Oh right, yeah, no, it looks good. Uh, I'll have to dust off my Switch. I haven't played that. Thinking of hobby. I here's what I did while you were out in Japan. Mm-hmm. This is what I did. I finally, for the first time ever, just hooked my switch up to the TV and just let let it sit there. <laughs> let it sit there because I got tired of like rummaging around like stuff with my switch buried under like papers and books and stuff. Oh, you needed a home. I for just it. finally just put it in a home, so it's okay. now connected to my TV, and I can just pick up the my pro controller and I can play it on the couch not like a that normal fucking person. Not that you're going to use it on the TV. No. You just, you just need it at home no. for I it mean, you look, might as well hook it up. I will... Because honestly, there are some games that like play better in TV mode than they do in handheld mode. Like at a certain point, Metroid uh, Dread just played better in TV. Yeah, it got, mode, it got too you know. real. Like Saint, uh, Saints Row 4 plays better in TV mode. Like a lot of games do play better in TV mode. So... I'm going to let it sit there for now. Okay. So that's what's going on in my life. Lord of the Rings Return to Moria, October 24th, PS5 and Windows. Um, Cry Machina, October 24th, PS4, PS5, Switch and Windows. City Skylines, October 25th. uh, Sorry, October 24th. Uh, PS5, Xbox Series, and Windows City, city Skylines, Skylines 2 uh, lets you build and manage a city with dynamic weather, complex economic systems, and with all the tools you need to design roads, infrastructure, and more. This is the game for people who are tired of SimCity and all the shit that EA has made SimCity do. Okay. 
Very good. Yeah. Uh, the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1, October 24th. This is a big deal. PS5, Xbox Series X and S, Switch, and Windows. This is awesome. I'm glad this is coming out. Um, I have all of them in, yeah. in every way that they could. I don't need them again. <laughs> I like. I would love to have this on my Switch because I would like to play the MSX games. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that would be a good place to play them when I was on Switch. I would buy Twin Snakes again. Yeah. I'm not interested in any of these other games. Because I have them all already in other ways. Right. The thing is, like, we don't have... Like, I don't have them at least in a convenient factor. Because, mm-hmm. like, the, the Switch is just convenient. You pick it up and you play the game. Like, the other ones, I got to dig out the PlayStation 2. I yeah, we dig- have this exact collection for the Xbox 360. Right, but I gotta dig out the 360. I gotta, you know. Do we? Is it backwards compatible? Oh wait, I think it is. Never mind. Okay. Well, that'd be great. Yeah. Just fucking plug that thing. In. Um, what was I gonna say? I know there was like controversy around it because like the games are running in like 60. Well, Metal Gear Solid One isn't running in 60. It's running in 30. But like I think it was originally running in thirty. Yeah, I'm with. cool with that if that's how it was originally played. Yeah, because like I, this this is just a piece of history yeah. here, re, reborn. Like this isn't remastered. Well, they're calling do they they call it the master collection. They call it the master collection. Yeah, this is just the way the games were. Here they are again. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm trying to see the only I also think the Xbox version is better, the Xbox three sixty version, because that has Peace Walker. And Peace Walker was hard to play at the time because you needed yes. a PSP. And playing it on a home console was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all the games run at 1080p on all systems except the Switch. It runs in 720p uh, in handheld mode. And Metal Gear Solid runs at 30 across all systems, whereas Sons of Liberty and Snake Eater run at 60 on all systems except Switch. It runs at 30. So that's, but but like, I don't understand why there's like, if that's what the games originally ran at, what, where's the controversy? Like, what's the problem? We're already getting these at 1080p, which is much higher than they originally were. These are SD games. People just want the frame rate. They just think big number, better game, you know? Yeah, I guess. But like, you know, at a certain point you have to you know understand what you're dealing with here you have to understand that if you're playing a playstation one game with no new features other than uh, it's on a new console yeah if you're playing a a, a playstation original playstation game or an n64 game the frame rate's going to be bad and that's the way it was intended to be played i think you know i I think this all stems back to something we've talked about before like people have this warped perception of like what a re-release of a game uh should be like they think every re-release is going to be the resident evil 2 remake mm. and that's not necessarily the case J buggy says that they ran at 60 frames per second on the 360 and ps3 versions that's interesting if they made it worse but then snake eater here says the 360 version doesn't have metal gear solid one and that's the one that runs at 30 the so. the 360 version does not have metal gear solid one no mm. it's just two three and uh peace walker okay yeah so then it's the same yeah then it's the same except for a metal gear solid one yeah we're just not getting that or no we're getting that now and we didn't have that in the 360 version but the 360 version had peace walker i would sacrifice metal gear solid one for peace walker any day of the week right except twin snakes i'd much rather have twin snakes than any of them i don't know if we're gonna get i'm surprised they didn't put twin snakes in the switch version yeah but so i don't know i mean there is a second volume coming out eventually right um but the thing is twin snakes was i think published by nintendo yeah. it was made by a then nintendo second party it has mario and yoshi characters in it so i don't know if like twin snakes can come to other systems they would have to remove that stuff yeah yeah uh, i would love to see that again i'd imagine the second volume is going to have uh peace walker uh metal metal gear 4 would be very difficult but yeah uh, that's another I, thing because it's like references the fact you're playing on a playstation they might actually do metal gear 4 mm-hmm. um and i think it's kind of metal gear 5 would be weird yeah metal gear 5 if they re-release that they should finish it yeah <laughs> 
All right, we're back to the list. Okay. Uh, Vertigo 2, October 24th, uh, PSVR 2. Uh, Ghost Runner 2, October 26th, PS5, Xbox Series, and Windows. This looks good. I uh, wasn't... I didn't like the first Ghost Runner. Right. This looks like it fixes all of my problems with it. If you're looking for some fast-paced first-person katana wielding action, mark October 26th on your calendar for Ghost Runner 2. You can check out a free demo on console and PC right now. It's basically a Mirror's Edge, but you have a, you have weapons. Right. <laughs> oh, it's a demo. I should check that out. Wait, it's out right now? It's a demo, demo out. Yeah. Okay, I got to try Let me that. check out the... That might be a mouse and keyboard game. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if it's on PS5. A friend of mine just got a PS5. And all he was talking about how great the app is for PS5, the PlayStation app. Isn't it dog shit? Isn't it bad? No. The app? No. The, the PlayStation app is actually really good. Oh, okay. You can pretty much control your entire system from here. Oh, I thought it was bad. No, the Xbox app is pretty bad. Okay. <laughs> it's mostly in terms of like... I kind of like the Xbox app. Here, here's my big thing with the Xbox app. Here's my problem with the Xbox app. The PlayStation app is like much clearer about, you know... This is the game. Buy it. Yes or no. Okay. And it's done. And then it'll download to your system. The Xbox app, you cannot buy games from the Xbox app. Uh, All it says is download to console, regardless of whether or not you own the game. So it will like have the game show up. A friend of mine did this. He bought Gotham Knights on the Xbox app, but when he went to his system, it didn't download. It just had the icon there. He still had to go to the Xbox store on the system and buy the game oh, that's directly. Annoying. That defeats yeah. the whole purpose. I think that's just because there's like uh what you call there's it? There's an upcharge. Yeah, the well no, the uh the Apple tax. Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to avoid that. So yeah, there you go. Demo right here, and I'm just gonna download it to my PlayStation. What I like about the Xbox app is that it shows you your consoles because I got Xboxes out the yeah. wazoo and you could pick one from it and stuff. You can remote into it from there. You could uh, see what games are on it and, and the capacity that it has. Um, you could do that with it with this. Mm -hmm. The thing is the, the PlayStation app is optimized for PS5. Mm -hmm. Like it'll tell you how much storage is on your console and the uh, SSD that you put in. You know what it is? I'm biased because the the playstation app for playstation 4 was dog shit yes and the xbox the xbox one app was great yeah and the app now hasn't changed since the xbox one right and now we have a brand new app for right PlayStation well, i mean 5. the playstation app again it's been optimized for ps5 like it didn't like it still works for ps4 but just not as well as it does for ps5 okay uh, we're going off on a tangent but you did bring up an interesting thing about how the xbox app Hasn't changed. I've been going back and forth between the two, the Series X and the PS5, and I got to be honest with you. I feel like the PS5, <laughs> the screen went blank. Are we still going? We're still, we're still going. Live? We're still alive. Okay. The PS5 actually feels like a next gen system to me. The Xbox Series X feels like the same thing I've been playing for the past 10 years. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. there's like a disconnect between like, you know, what's actually a new system and what's the same old shit <laughs> and for lack of a better word. So like, I think Xbox just got it right the first time and PlayStation <laughs> is playing catch up. Also, you came into the PlayStation 5 much later, yeah. which is probably better yeah. because at the very beginning wasn't a great experience on the right. PlayStation 5. It's yeah. gotten a lot better, yeah. but still, there's still some some things that are, that are questionable. So, I will say, I do have one problem with my PS5, and it's a weird one. This is a will-only problem. It's always a weird thing that is wrong with PlayStation. So, the way it usually works is when I turn off the console, you know, the console shuts off, and then the, my TV goes to just, you know, the blank screen, you know, Input, uh, no signal, please, you know, turn on the device or whatever. With my PS5, when I turn off the system, it launches the Samsung free TV app on my TV. And it just starts playing random free uh, internet channels. <laughs> turn off the setting, the HDMI, like, smart on off setting you think that turn all that off okay. yeah because something 
something is being sent through the HDMI cable mm -hmm. that's telling the TV that the system's on or off. Yeah. And your TV is misinterpreting that somehow into thinking, yeah, I'll turn on the Samsung app. All or right, I'll have to try that. So, uh, yeah, that, that might, that might fix it. Okay. I, I have heard a lot of people have issues with the PlayStation and that setting that turns on the TV. Yeah. Cause this is like the, the weird, like issue with that. All right. Back to the list. Dave the Diver, October 26th, coming to Switch. Dave the Diver marks his debut on Nintendo's uh, hybrid console. Um, with his pixel art, charm, RPG mechanics, and gorgeous underwater vistas, Dave the Diver offers a diversity of gameplay, including tons of side quests and mini games. Have this you heard game, about this game? I have heard. It looks really good. Yes. It came out on Steam, and everybody really liked it. Yes, it's like gotten rave reviews. I am very curious to see, like, actually play this game and see what it's all about. I think there's a demo. Did I download the demo? I think I downloaded it. I didn't demo. realize that you are fishing for your sushi restaurant. Yes. And then at night... You have to run the sushi yeah, restaurant. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah. That there's like that two games in cool. one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alan Wake 2, October 27th. Oh, PS5, Xbox Series, and Windows. Uh, the long overdue sequel to the 2010 game that first introduced us to the saga of author Alan Wake and the mysterious events of Bright Falls. Featuring two protagonists, you take on the role of both Alan Wake and newcomer Saga Anderson in two intertwined single-player campaigns. This game looks great. I am excited to play it. I don't know when the hell I'm going to get to play it, <laughs> but uh, it looks so good. It does look Alan really good. Alan Wake 1 was really good, and I'm, I'm excited that they're finally doing more with the series. Uh, EA Sports UFC 5, October 27th, PS5, Xbox Series. Um Jusant, October 31st, PS5, Xbox Series, and Windows, is and it, that's what, it. What is, what is Juice? Oh, I don't know anything about this game. Uh, stylish action adventure puzzle game. We'll see you uh, put your climbing chops to the test with the tower of every pro proportions and varied environments. That's a lot of games it's for October. It's a lot of fucking games for October, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a big month. It's a there, big, there's so much shit going on. It's a on lot. Right it's, like a, it's a shocking amount in like such a small amount of time. Yeah. There's like something for everyone. You got your big ass stuff like Spider Man. You got your small ass stuff. Small like ass Sonic. stuff like Dave the Diver. Well, you got Sonic and Mario. You got Sonic and Mario both having 2D side scrollers a week apart. Yeah. <laughs> so that's insane in and of itself. There's too much to do. There's a lot. To I, do. I, I already got to play all the games I'm trying to get through. Yeah. Um, but hey, at least Arkham Knight got delayed, so you don't have to play that. <laughs> I don't think I was planning on it. You know, I did see a clip today of, I think it was, Ar no, it definitely was Arkham Knight. Uh, just some combat in Arkham Knight. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, those games were good. Yes. I didn't like Arkham Knight. I know you didn't like Arkham Knight. But the combat in all of them was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. There, we, we, we finally did it. We made yes. it through the first story. Uh, but we do have notifications from... Panda Biscuits, thank you for the three months. Wicked Spooky, thanks for the 17 months. Yo, guys, I hope you're doing amazeballs. Thank you. Thank you. Sachi, thank you for the 11 months. And Jay Buggy, thank you for the 68 months. Oh, damn, been here a while. Love the podcast. Thank you. That might be the most you can, the most months you can do here. Yeah. You and I think, uh, underscore. Oh, God, that took me a while. Uh, have the longest streak, I think. Eric is, uh, is fucking nothing. Eric's <laughs> fucking bullshit numbers. Um, all right, what's next? We got to talk about the, the Knights of the Old Republic remake. I remember this. Yes. Uh, we only got a trailer. We got a teaser trailer of a light lightsaber, uh, going off uh yeah darth revan holding the lightsaber and that's, and that's it. it yeah that's all we we got uh bioware's 2003 nice little republic is one of the most well-known video games that to bear the franchise a star wars name and players were delighted to hear that it would be coming to current gen uh consoles but much like star wars eclipse whose existence had to be reconfirmed by quantic dream last week the remake of kotor is now facing similar scrutiny Earlier in the week, fans online realized that the initial reveal trailer for the KOTOR remake was marked as private on YouTube. What's more, previous social media posts from Sony, console-wise, the remake is a PS5 exclusive, has been deleted. Uh, even as users were able to pull up the posts via uh, the Wayback Machine or Google Caches. 
uh, when con- when contacted for comment, Sony told Atlas the removal were the removals were related to music licensing, calling it part of normal business. We delisted the assets with mu- uh, licensed music when the license expires. Uh, but as many have pointed out, the only main Star Wars theme, only the main Star Wars theme is used in the trailer, which is owned by Disney. Um, part of the reason for the concern on the part of players can be owed to the state of the game industry right now. Aspire, which had recently done remasters for various old Star Wars games, uh, was initially on deck uh, to create the KOTOR remake, uh, but that work has been put on hold last year when it uh, when its pitch didn't fully land with Lucasfilm or Sony. Months later, it was reported that development has shifted over to Saber Interactive. But both studios are owned by Embracer Group, which has spent much of the summer closing studios and shuttering projects. Whichever studio ends up with uh, working on the game, it's believed that the game will be released around 2025 at the earliest, and that's if things continue to go smoothly as planned. Uh, so yeah, all of a sudden, it's just the trailer for it is private on YouTube for licensing reasons. Okay, weird. You, Very weird. You'd think they would have the license if they yes, had. Yes, if, if you're they... making a Star Wars game, you would have the license to the Star yeah. Wars music. So who is, oh, it is Aspire. Aspire, yeah. yeah Aspire, weird shit's going on with them. They well, were doing so good for a while, and then, yeah. uh, the first Knights of the Republic, uh, uh, port uh was broken and shitty yeah and then uh things started to go downhill and it's weird because aspire like they're more known as a port house this is going to be like fr- from the ground up remake which i think is honestly out of their wheelhouse so it's definitely out of their wheelhouse and i think that they're gonna run into wacky issues outside of even just development like this right you know well it, it developments move over to saber interactive but since then we've heard nothing yeah something's wrong something's wrong something's yeah. definitely wrong maybe saber looked at it and was like we can't do anything with this yeah. we gotta start over again <laughs> yeah um but that's not all that's happening with oh us. wait wood says aspire did myth force on switch and that's the worst port i've ever seen the port of myth force myth force is the game that uh looked like uh he-man and and yes thundercats yes but it, it it's apparently it's a shitty game okay yeah I was actually hoping that would be pretty good, yeah. but it, it actually looks pretty bad. Anyway, more more Kotor and Aspire news, okay. uh, and it's not good. A class action lawsuit related to Knights of the Old, Old Republic 2 on Switch has surfaced with plaintiffs seeking restitution and damages for what the lawsuit claims were illegal marketing and advertisements used by developer Aspire and its parent company, Saber Interactive. As spotted by the gamer, the lawsuit was originally filed on July 8th in the state of California, uh, on behalf of the plaintiff Malachi Mikolonis and other c- customers in the state who felt that they had been deceived by Aspire for following their purchase of KOTOR 2 on Switch. Aspire's port of KOTOR 2 on Switch released last year and initially promised restored content DLC for the original Xbox era RPG developed by Obsidian was coming soon. According to the lawsuit, when asked when the DLC would arrive by fans on Twitter, Aspire said summer 2022 stated the DLC would come in Q3 2022. Turned out not to be the case. Earlier this year, Aspire canceled the DLC and instead gave KOTOR 2 players on Switch the option to select a free Star Wars game from a list of titles, including Republic Commando, Force Unleashed, or a copy of Old Republic 2 on PC, which does have the DLC. Mention of the DLC was removed from the game's eShop page and its initial announcement trailer. So it was going to be a free update of the DLC that would have the DLC? Uh, I believe so. Because I'm not seeing that anywhere. Yeah, I believe it was supposed to be... There was. It goes on. The restored content DLC was a major selling point of for the Switch port with the game's co- cut content having previously only been available unofficially on PC thanks to modders. According to the lawsuit, Michelonis is said to have purchased the Switch version... Oh, this is the guy who's suing them? Yeah. Uh, claimed to purchase the Switch version uh, of KOTOR 2 specifically for the DLC and was waiting to play the game until the restored content DLC arrived. Well, then you shouldn't have fucking bought it idiot <laughs> when the dlc was canceled and michelonis was unable to re- receive a refund he sought legal action in july 2023 a few weeks after the announcement okay so it wasn't gonna be free people just really wanted the dlc well because when aspire brought back uh kotor 2 on steam that was a major selling point of it that it came with the restored content 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, bringing it to Switch, they promised that it would also come to Switch. And then all of a sudden they said, actually, no. No, it seems like a big deal DLC for yeah. sure. But uh... yeah, because KOTOR 2, much like uh, Phantom Limb, was not finished when they released it. And then, you know, fans over the years were able to complete it. And then Aspire made it an official release. This is a $15 game. Yeah. But it's also more expensive on Switch. Just, I mean, I hope this is a class action thing and not just it one is. guy trying to get. You know, it's a class action. Like, like he's trying to get uh emotional damage money or something uh it says they are looking to seeking to have attorney's fees and costs covered force aspire and saber interactive to cease and desist from selling and distributing kotor with the deceptive and false advertising and re and receive uh such other relief as the court finds just adequate and proper including but not limited to a remedy for disgorgement disgorgement yeah that's a good name for a game or a band that is a very good name for a band um it's not looking good for aspire yeah no well, it's not looking day. good for embracer group who owns aspire ah. you know they've been having a very rough 2023 well i hope they i hope aspire makes something good soon <laughs> yeah they were on a roll for a while they were doing very well for themselves and then and then oops uh all right let's talk about the xbox leaks yeah we're a little late on but i'd like to talk about this so yes. i heard about these leaks on twitter mm -hmm. and i immediately quote tweeted it and i was like this looks fake as fuck why is everybody talking about this like it's real yeah and it turned out to be, be very real real so real but it's an internal document that was leaked that is projecting what Microsoft's future plans are that are, of course, subject to change. Well, it's not just that. There were also, like, emails between Phil Spencer and other gaming executives. There was, like, uh, you know, design documents and, like, marketing images and stuff for future plans. Uh, also, like, you know speculation on what might be coming out in the game like in the games world yeah microsoft trying to buy or talking about buying nintendo that that was the the one of the bigger ones that came out of yeah this. uh in the leaked emails phil spencer and microsoft personnel discussed the possibility of acquiring nintendo at some point spencer wrote nintendo uh getting nintendo would be a career moment he speculated that the japanese game giant could uh become a more open to acquisition offers in the future due to changing pressures on its board of directors it's just taking a long time for nintendo to realize that their future exists off of their own hardware he wrote a life a uh, long time uh so basically phil spencer thinks that like eventually nintendo's like just gonna want to be bought <laughs> i don't i mean no i i don't really know how they operate like they operate a lot different than every other game company. Yeah. Um, I don't think that, I mean, they're publicly traded Nintendo, but, yeah. but I don't think they really, that's that they're not, they don't really care about that. They, right. they, 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 their focus is so different, you mm -hmm. know, like the people at the top aren't waiting for a big payout yeah. to then, you know, retire. Like, like they are more interested in the legacy that they leave at the company. Yeah. So, uh, no, I don't yeah, think that I, they're I doubt... interested at all. Yeah. Uh, um, oh. Unless uh, something uh, major is going on where they're like, this maybe the Switch 2 is an incredible failure and yeah. then the Switch 3 is an incredible failure and then they need to be bought. But uh, no, mm -hmm. I don't I don't see a world where, where they, they want to get bought at all. Keep in mind, this is the second time that uh, Microsoft has contemplated buying Nintendo. They originally were going to do it before the original Xbox launched. That was going to be their way to get into the gaming mm -hmm. world. And Nintendo basically wrote back, ha, 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 no. They would have had a small window during the GameCube era. Yeah. <laughs> and then another window. During the if Wii the era. Switch failed, uh, Microsoft would would own Nintendo. Yeah. Yeah. But the Switch did the opposite of that. Yeah. So, fat chance. Uh, apparently, the email emails also reveal Microsoft almost thought about buying Valve or Warner Brothers games. Valve, they should buy Valve. That would be a lot of money, mm -hmm. and that would definitely be an FCC issue. Yeah. 
Warner Bro- I knew Warner Brothers like was thinking about selling off their games division a while ago. I'm surprised they haven't. Uh, anyway, uh, Bethesda might be working on an Oblivion remaster. That's a big I, one. I a did re- hear a about remaster that. of Elder Scrolls Four Oblivion. See now that to me that's one of the things that I saw that seems like uh like some 4chan bullshit. Because I was like, I, I would never if I saw that as a leak, I'd be like, there's no way. Well, that that they want to do that. Well, I mean, it was in the leaks, so it looks like. I mean, it makes sense because Elder Scrolls Six, I think, just started pre-production, mm-hmm. so it's going to be a long time before we get an Elder Scrolls game. They got to put out something to you know placate fans. That that's the perfect game right there. To to be to to be perfectly clear, these leaks happened uh, because. Microsoft needed to upload some documents for the court case that they're in. Yeah. And they uploaded the wrong documents. <laughs> and it just they just leaked a whole bunch yeah. of shit by accident. And uh it was uh, Phil Spencer even responded. And, yeah. and and he said uh these are uh old documents and things have changed uh so he basically confirmed that these were real yeah. at some point. Uh Bethesda's roadmap also included um a sequel to Ghost Rider Ry- Ry- Sorry, Ghostwire Tokyo. I have Dis- that. I wanted to play that. Dishonored 3. I have Dishonored 2. I haven't played it yet. Dishonored 1 was great. And remasters of Fallout 3 and Oblivion. Fallout 3 needs some color. Yeah. That, that was that, the... That game was like gray and green. That's the Fallout game. I That's the Bethesda game I might have played the most. Yeah. Fallout 3. I played a... a a decent amount of that and i hated it the whole time <laughs> i don't know why i played so much of it uh phil spencer said that triple a game publishers have lost their mojo spencer stated that triple a yeah. publishers were slow to react to the disruption of digital storefronts like steam and shops built into xbox and playstation in a leaked email spencer wrote that third-party publishers were unable to replicate the dominance they established back in the days of video game retail after losing their advantage of highly exclusive access to consumers in brick and mortar stores, they have not found a way to effectively cross promote. They have not found a way to build publisher brands that drive consumer affinity the way Disney has in video. Uh, he also noted that instead of instead, they've adopted a strategy of making huge bets on highly expensive prestige products, relying on those risky all in bets to establish a Establish and maintain publisher brands. He concluded that the role of a AAA publisher has changed and become less important in the gaming industry. Uh, if you can find like that email, like seek it out and read it because it's very insightful and nothing he says is wrong. He's a hundred percent right. They're like the big AAA companies, your EAs, your Activisions, your Take Twos. They're so focused on like spending billions of dollars on like one or two games and praying to God that those games become like massive hits. And like, it just, it affects not just their own companies, but like the games around them. And like, it, it's just, it's not good. It's yeah. not good for the industry. Phil Spencer knows what he's doing. It's just, he's st- steering a very, very large ship. Yes. And there's a lot of moving parts and you can't possibly control all of yeah. them. So there's gonna be problems, yeah. and there is, and they're they're just they they're happening. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft expected a Red Dead Redemption Two next gen refresh. Um, it didn't happen, but they think they thought it was on its way. There's basically a, a PS5 or a Series X update to Red Dead Two. I don't know what the fuck Rockstar's all doing. I don't know either. Apparently, I my my Xbox boss uh, sent me an article. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 6 is going to cost $150 when it comes out. <laughs> that would be very interesting. That would be nuts. Like I would pay I would pay $150. Part of me for doesn't Grand Theft Auto believe 6. it, but on the other hand, part of me does. Uh, part like, of me believes that it's going to be more than $70. Yeah. I can definitely see that being $100 just for the base game. Yeah. Not even for like GTA Online or like anything else. Just like the the base Grand Theft Auto. You know what? I would like. I love to see the numbers. So many fucking people paid over a hundred dollars for Starfield just to play it a week early. Yeah. So Grand Theft Auto, the biggest game of all time. Yeah. People are gonna be willing to spend a hundred yeah. bucks on it. Uh, three quarters of Xbox gamers uh, had a Series S. Uh, as of April 2022, wow. 74.8% of Xbox Series owners were gaming on the Series S, suggesting that a quarter of the base left gaming on the more powerful Series X. 
Um, this was over a year ago, however, and more recent data suggests the install base is now split 50-50. But you gotta wonder how much the massive Series S install base is causing headaches for developers trying to bring high-end games to the Xbox ecosystem. Yeah, that's... I wasn't expecting that. I, I know that the Series S was uh, more popular. Yeah. But three quarters is, that's, is, is a lot. That's way more popular. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, made, it was easier to get for the longest period of time, and it also was, like, so much cheaper. Yeah. I think, you know, Phil Spencer said they expected to sell more Series S's. But I don't think they would expect to sell uh, 75% more <laughs> Series S's. Yeah, I mean, people shit on the Series S a lot, but I think it's a great little console. Yeah. And uh, it's a good position on the market because it's it's, it's yeah. cheaper. You, you yeah. play the same games and it's cheaper. So uh, This this uh, definitely put mud on their face. Microsoft dramatically underestimated Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is a super good game, but Microsoft didn't seem to think that uh, the D&D RPG would amount to much. In leaked comments, Microsoft estimated the Microsoft estimated a $5 million expense to get the game on Game Pass, justifying the low monetary amount by describing Baldur's Gate 3 as a second-run Stadia PC RPG. Reacting to this statement, Larian's director of publishing noted that Microsoft was far from alone in underestimating the appeal of the game. So they didn't think much. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think anybody did. I, I, I don't think you could anticipate Baldur's Gate 3 to be as big of a deal as it was. Yeah. And as good of a game as it is. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a level like it could be popular, but not like as popular as it's become. I would have never thought twice about Baldur's Gate yeah. 3. Uh, also, I did see somewhere that second run doesn't mean lower tier. Second run just means like it debuted on PC first and then was going to come to the console later. Oh, uh, okay. But still not a good look. Um, I don't know if it's in this article, but I will say about $5 million to get the game on Game Pass. Um, five million? Five million. I thought it was two. Oh, they were gonna off they said they would estimate they would have to offer Larian five million dollars to get Baldur K3 on Game Pass. They estimated that they would need to offer EA three hundred million dollars for Jedi Survivor. Oh. Uh, well, they, yeah, that's a huge game. Yeah. yeah. Baldur's K3 is obvious as you know objectively a bigger game now yeah. but that's just like the disparity the disparity between like Baldur's gate and like an ea made game you know and that goes back to you know spending god ungodly amounts of money on games mm -hmm. you know to bring it to the masses yeah and if they were to buy it now <coughs> to put on game pass it would be 300 million yeah yeah that's how much they missed the mark on that uh phil spencer was not impressed with the ps5 reveal uh, he In an email to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, Spencer described the Series X and S as a better product than what Sony has, not just on hardware, but equally important on software, platform, and uh, services. Uh, and he said that we have the ingredients of a winning plan. Today is a good day for us. Yeah, I mean, of course. He's not going to say, oh, no, oh, I'm shaking in fucked. my boots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh -huh. he's got to tell his boss that. <laughs> uh, Microsoft accidentally got an exclusive Sega game. Um, there was some like, weird like back and forth between like Microsoft got to release uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon exclusively in America, but not in Japan. Oh, it was I just, was going to yeah. say, you can't get an exclusive game from Sega yeah. to, to release in Japan. They just got Xboxes. I didn't know yeah. this. I saw it on the shelves when I was there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, it, like last week, the Xboxes <laughs> came out in Japan. I yeah. didn't know that. I, I didn't know they either. Had yeah. Uh, here we go. The Series X might go all digital in 2024. This was the the biggest news. Yeah. Codename Brooklyn. The leaked data indicates that the possible hardware refresh will include a more more internal storage, faster Wi-Fi, reduced power, and a more immersive controller. It is a more cylindrical-like design with no disk drive. Uh, if this thing does see the light of day, uh, this, the writer will happily refer to it as the Trash Can Xbox in honor of the Trash Can MacBook Pro. It does look like the Trash Can. It does MacBook. look like a trash can. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to look up to confirm uh, that the Xbox just came out in Japan, and I think I'm just totally wrong about that. Maybe. I could have sworn I heard. So I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. So um, 
there's the trash can. It looks very stupid. There's, I don't think this is possibly a finalized design. Or no, anything. I, don't, I don't think it is. But I think the all the bullet points, I think, is something they could possibly release in the next revision of the Xbox Series. Yeah, this is what they they're looking at doing. So just yeah. so that everybody in the company is on the same page. Yeah. You know, this is this is a vague idea of what we want. Yeah. Um, same price, five hundred dollars. No disk drive. Um, USB C front ports with power delivery. Two terabyte uh, internal storage. Uh, Bluetooth five point two. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E, uh, reduce power consumption. So, why? <laughs> What's better about it? Honestly, more internal storage. Here's the thing: like it has no disc drive, but the more internal storage will offset the price, so it's still the same price as a disc drive Xbox Series. It's got to have better internals, more than just storage. We need more. It says it has it would have uh, an improved Wi-Fi card and Bluetooth. Why would I want this over the one that exists right now? I know. Th- I you need to give me more of a reason. Here's the thing. I this Microsoft has been wanting to do all digital consoles for a long time now. This is their this is their push for that. I can I can 100 percent believe that they're going to come out with a discless Xbox Series X. Yeah. In the near future, not this year. Probably next year. I wouldn't be surprised if PlayStation does that with the next generation. All digital? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if Microsoft does it, then that's definitely the, the way that the industry is going to go next. And that's going to suck. That's going to suck for your library of games that you want to keep playing. That's going to suck for preservation. That's going to suck for backwards compatibility. It's going to suck for everyone. It's going to, I think the biggest push is going to be the big box retailers. Uh, yeah. They're going to lose a lot of money and they're going to fight back really hard about that. Yeah. I think that that's a, that's a big reason why there still is physical. That's a big reason why there's still DVDs, mm-hmm. you know? So that's not a good time. Uh, what is a good time? The Xbox could be getting a fancy new controller. Uh, the image of the controller, uh, codename uh, Sibyl, Sibyl. One of those uh, shows a two-tone color design that promises modular thumbsticks and features and features that may that many a PlayStation fan have known for years now: lift to wake, precision haptic feedback, and an accelerometer. So, it also just looks like the handles are thinner. Yeah, and I don't like that. Like, I love the f- the the way an Xbox controller feels, and this looks like it will feel more like a PlayStation controller, and I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised it isn't like more similar to what a traditional Xbox controller looks like. I am surprised that, you know, they didn't just do this in the beginning of the generation. Yeah, it just needs an accelerometer. Yeah. That's all it needs. Like the 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 haptics are nice, but like unimportant. The accelerometer actually affects gameplay more so, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it has haptics in the triggers. Yeah. And they feel pretty good. But but yeah, the, the accelerometer is really what it what it's yeah. lacking compared to other consoles. Um, but this also oh. kind of solidifies that this is feeling like a new generation. You can't just change yeah. the controller like that. Uh, despite the uh, despite how the controller may look in the image, the copy indicates that it will feature the same ergonomics as the current Xbox Series controller. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. why this feels like a weird. Like, like, not an announcement. This is like a weird internal Th- this thing. This wasn't an announcement. This was yeah. a leak. Yeah. This I mean, never should have seen the light of day because why would the picture be different yeah. than, than what they mean? You know? Yeah. Uh, Microsoft sees its next Xbox as a cloud hybrid machine. Slides projecting the future of the Xbox platform indicate that Microsoft is very much looking uh, to the cloud uh, to help power its post Xbox Series X and S console. For, uh, for which it's looking at a 2028 release date. Microsoft describes such a machine as a next generation hybrid game platform capable of leveraging the combined power of the client and cloud to deliver deeper immersion and an entirely new class of game experiences. They desperately need uh, the streaming console. Right. Yeah. But 
What does that mean using the cloud to deliver deeper immersion and entirely new gaming experiences? Deeper immersion is a dumb word. Yeah. Is a dumb way to word that. That's just. I think that's just. I don't know. They had to hit a deadline <laughs> and make it sound flowery. I remember like when Crackdown Three came out, and they made a big deal about how they were using the cloud to like render like building destruction and stuff, and then that wound up not happening in Crackdown Three. But like that was like one of the initial like pitches for the game, and I still don't understand how like using the cloud to render some parts of the game but not others is better than just having it all run on hardware yeah you know i mean and if you can't run it all on hardware then just run the whole game in the cloud and make it a streaming game when like, i'm when when i hear xbox talking about the cloud i'm thinking game pass and streaming like that right but this doesn't sound like game this sounds like some weird half and half where like i can go into target buy the game put it in my console and then half of it would run from the console and the other half of it would run in the cloud. I don't, I'm unsure what our future of gaming is going to look like, but right. I've always said that I think that the cloud is going to be where a lot of people are going to be playing games in the future. And maybe the transition will be some weird hybrid thing. I mean, right now you cannot play Starfield without being connected to the internet. And right. It is a single player game. But that's... <laughs> see that's different like because right now like if you play like a game like starfield connected to the internet it's not streaming the entire game to you well this it's, wouldn't be the entire game it would it, be pieces of it right but right now it's just like basically confirming that you legally own the game yeah. you know this is like saying like okay we're gonna stream the world around you but the characters you interact with are running on the hardware itself yeah it's i mean <clears throat> different games use the internet in different ways like yeah. like a lot of nintendo games if there is an interruption in the connection the game stops and you know that there's an interruption in the connection right other games like call of duty they try to smooth it over if there's an interruption right. in the connection so if you're doing a hybrid type thing it probably doesn't need a constant like a uh, perfect connection it could probably take a few hiccups yeah. you know and, f and hopefully fill in the blanks in between I don't know. I I think there's potential to do some crazy shit with that, uh, but also just make a more powerful console. Yeah, like, <laughs> like you know, games it, like this is seeming like this is the next generation. So why are you making it so small? <laughs> why are you making it so complicated? Like games yeah. are simple. Like there is a system. Play games on it, and then in like five, six, seven years, make a more powerful version of the same system. Well, I like the idea of them having a weak console and a powerful console. Like I know that yeah, like an entry level version of yeah. people shit on the Series S because they think it's holding back video games, like Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Um, but having a Series S that is also powered by the cloud so that developers can get everything that they could on uh -huh. a Series X, that would be a pretty good selling yeah. point and that would make developers happy. Although I don't know how, I mean, developing for the cloud might be an issue too, but yeah. uh, that might be a good happy medium. So this little fucking dumb little garbage can thing <laughs> should be the $300 one. This should be the, yeah. the, the cheap guy. And then they should make a big guy for the five hundred dollar one that that everybody's gonna want. Yeah. I'll also steal from MKBHD's podcast. They said that's not a box. <laughs> it's true. It's not a box. It's not a box. So dumb design. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, Xbox is a dumb name. No, it's all it's sick. Yes. It's sick yes. Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a Monster Energy drink can. It does. I mean, the original Xbox, I guess. Uh, what came first? Original Xbox or Monster Energy drink? Original Xbox came out in 2002? Or 2001? 2001. It came out in 2001. Monster Energy drink introduced 2002. Oh. They took inspiration from Xbox. There you go. 
beat em ups in the chat. A uh, 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 big fan yeah. uh, of the channel. Always he, work. He always comes to the streams. <laughs> uh, could be interesting to see a hybrid of both at once, kind of like a gas electric car. All the important parts are on the hardware, but some pressure is taken off with streaming. Yeah. I like that idea if it's the cheaper console. Yeah. If it's the whole thing, they're taking a huge gamble on how the... Uh, on the trajectory of the of the entire games market. Yeah. Because, I don't know, man. I feel like you look at uh, movie streaming and, like, people are getting fed up with that in terms of, like, you know, the quality of the movies that are being put on the services, um, the prices of, like, keep going up, uh, the selection isn't there. Uh, all these other, like, factors are, like, really starting to, like, sour people to the idea of streaming like media instead of just like you know downloading it and buying its own or like buying the dvd or the blu-ray and i feel like we got there faster with gaming than we did with movies does that make sense it's like the disillusionment of it it's more of a problem for games yeah. or it can be more of a problem for games than it would have been for 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 movies because yeah. movies you're just sitting there and you're watching right Although the, my problem with movie streaming is that uh, the you can't really control the quality. Yeah, like like you're always just getting a shitty buffering version of the movie, and, and I've got you know, my nice 4K TV. I want to see a nice version of yeah. it, you know. Okay, uh, there's still a lot here. There's still a lot. What do we definitely got to talk about? Because we got to shave something. Uh. I mean, I could summarize Epic Games is laying off a whole lot of people. The One of the richest game companies in the world, you know, has all that Fortnite money, can't employ a bunch of people. I'm very disappointed in my best friend, Tim Sweeney, who liked one of my <laughs> tweets one time. So we're bros, you know, do better. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, I mean, they, I mean, that there's just a, the, we're in a recession. Everybody's firing people. Yeah, but like one of the biggest companies like on the planet. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Certain companies like that shouldn't be, Mm -hmm. and I definitely feel like in the case of like Epic, that's more of a management problem than it is like the result of like the work of the people who got laid off. I think it it's it can be argued that it's always a management problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Game Pass comes to MetaQuest. Yes, that's that'll be cool. Yeah, you want to we'll read that article? I just just briefly summarize. Uh, this Meta has me. announced that the Game Pass service will allow MetaQuest VR users, headset users, to play uh, Xbox cloud gaming games within their headsets this December. Oh. The news came as part of last night's MetaQuest conference, where Mark Zuckerberg himself confirmed that those subscribed to Game Pass will be able to play their Xbox cloud gaming catalog, including. Forza, Forza Motorsport, Halo, Minecraft, and Starfield on a virtual screen inside their headset this December. This will be coming to all Quest headsets, although the presentation was mostly focused on the upcoming MetaQuest 3. It is believed it will also come to the MetaQuest 2 and the MetaQuest Pro. That's kind of cool, but I will never do that. I have so many other ways to play Game Pass. It, it looks like... You know, it looked like the way Apple showed off watching movies in Vision Pro where, like, a screen just comes up and you look at the screen. Yeah. Like, that was it. It doesn't, like, ma- it doesn't all of a sudden make Halo a VR game. So, I, th- th- I'm not interested in this at all unless Microsoft starts putting VR games on Game Pass. Right. Which they should. Uh, I mean, I guess, like, the Vive and stuff, they could benefit from that, but, uh, like... I, I I don't know. I don't know. They, they're it's, not in VR space at all. Yeah, they 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 almost were with the the the, the AR glasses that they had. The Hololens. The Hololens. Yeah. yeah, but then they didn't do anything with that. Yeah. Uh, f- Jim Ryan's quitting. Uh, yeah. Sony. Uh, f- what's his actual title? Sony PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan is stepping down after four years. Uh, basically said he doesn't. He lives in the UK, but he has to keep flying to California, Japan. And it's taking a toll on him. He wants to spend more time with his family, so he's stepping down. I don't blame him for that. Yeah, a lot of people are celebrating this. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of fans didn't like him because he was really pushing a lot of like live service uh, elements in PlayStation games, despite the fact that we're having a lot of their success on single player prestige games. Like, um, I'm not a huge PlayStation fan, but I wouldn't put it on him. Yeah, you know, 
And there's other stuff too, like I guess you know Xbox fans like because he was very vocal against the Activision acquisition. Yeah, well, of course. No, obviously. Of yeah. course he's going to do that. Uh, and then also uh, Hideki Kamiya. Yeah, Hideki Kamiya, one of the founders of Platinum Games, creator of Bayonetta, and also at Capcom, Devil May Cry, and uh, Okami. Uh, he's leaving Platinum Games. This is interesting because yes. he founded it, and he was a, he, he, very famous, very vocal yes. uh, member. Great, of a lot the of their most popular community. games, Bayonetta, The Wonderful 101. Uh, yeah, now he's like, goodbye. I think Platinum has been up to some weird shit and uh, he doesn't agree and he's and he's straight up just quit. I think that's yeah. what's happening. Well, also Shinji Mikami was the founder of Platinum and he left to go form Tango and then he left Tango. Yeah, now he left Tango. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see what games they've made recently. Uh, Project GG. That's what they're working on. Yeah. Uh, Bayonetta, Bayonetta 3, Bayonetta Origins. Uh, I thought there were other games. I think Project GG was like delayed and delayed and delayed yeah. or something. A lot of games. Uh, I know Kamiya was working on Scalebound, which was going to be an Xbox oh, yeah. exclusive. And then Xbox canceled it. So I think I he was working on another game that got canceled. And yeah. he's just like fed up. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, let's talk about... Oh, Capcom saying games are too cheap? Uh, here. According to a report by uh, Nikkei... Uh, during the Tokyo Game Show, uh, Capcom president Haru, uh, Haroshiro uh, Sujimoto said that development costs for video games have become too high. Development costs are 100 times higher than they were than, during the Famicom era, but software prices have not gone up that much. Additionally, he claimed that there are there needs to be pay raises, saying that cons, uh, considering the fact that wages are rising in the industry as a whole, I think raising the unit prices is a healthy option for the business. Sujimoto also went on to claim that the slow economy wouldn't uh, wouldn't have a big impact on game prices either. Uh, just because there's a recession doesn't mean you don't want to go to a movie theater or go to your favorite artist concert. High quality games will continue to sell. Yeah, uh, I hear that during a recession, uh, entertainment doesn't really take a big hit because people still need the entertainment. People still want the escapism from the hard times, yeah. Yeah, but people still don't have money, though. Yeah. <laughs> so they, like, and, like, I, video games... like They would do a, better if they had money to spend. Video games is expensive. Yeah. It's an expensive hobby, especially when games cost as much as they do for one game, and, like, the systems like, themselves cost a lot of money. Like, it's hard to justify it a lot of times. Yeah. I think people... Especially, you know people in our generation who like now have homes and kids and other responsibilities. They have less and less time and less and less money to spend on these things. Yeah. So yeah, a game price is raising maybe understandable, but it's not exactly like news we look forward to. No, like we've been saying this for a long time. Like it, it makes sense that, that games should cost more, but nobody wants to hear it. And mm -hmm. it's not, you definitely don't want to hear it from, the Capcom president. Yeah. You don't want to hear from a guy who has the power to raise the game prices, yeah. you know. But he's not. He's not. He's not wrong. Uh, that being said, Cap. According to the article, Capcom has continued to sell its own games. Well, while most of the game industry uh, has transitioned over to seventy dollars, Capcom has continued to sell its games like Street Fighter VI and Resident Evil Four at sixty dollars. Interesting. Which is true. They have not. So they should. So what the fuck, dude? What are you complaining <laughs> about? So I don't know. you're allowed to sell them for 70 now. No yeah. one would even care. Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah. Uh along those lines, however, uh Resident Evil 4 remake, the iOS version, will launch at $60. I really want to try this. Yeah. But I don't want to buy it again. I have it already. I know. You know. And and I, you know, my save file is not gonna carry over. Yeah. So uh, and an extra DLC will be available for $20 alongside additional in-app purchases like weapon upgrades that range from 3 to $10. Give me a demo. Or put it on Apple Arcade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Resident Evil Village uh, will also arrive on iPhone 15 Pro and M1-powered iPads uh, on October 30th for $40. Oh, okay. So it's cheap. First of all, it's cheaper. Well, it's an older game. I mean... Resident Evil Village, I think, sells for forty dollars on Xbox now. Okay, fine. So. I uh, don't know when I'm getting my iPhone. I haven't even pre-ordered it okay. uh, because it's out. Why am I pre-ordering it? Yeah, it's out. So you just we just buy it. <laughs> yeah, I want to. Anybody work at the Apple Store <laughs> on, on, in New York or Long Island? 
I will. Uh, uh, I want a titanium 15 max, please. I uh, f- I have the Apple Card, and it does let you pay off the the iPhone like every month, and like it actually gives like I think it's like thirty dollars a month if you want to pay it off month to month. It's not a bad deal. No, I just fucking. I don't want to worry mm-hmm. about. It. I just want to mm-hmm. you just roll up and buy. I just you just can't buy it. Right. It's just unavailable for like a month. And I want it. I want it for the nice camera. I want it for. I want to make a video on the fucking the whole gaming yeah. stuff you can do with it. I realized that uh, since it's USB C, all my wacky uh, controllers, like the backbone yeah. and stuff, will just work. Yeah. So that'll be cool. Uh, are you gonna get the Pro or the Pro, Pro Plus? I want the big guy. The big screen. Not. I don't care about how big the screen is. Mm-hmm. I want the expensive one because of the camera stuff. Okay. I want the one with the three cameras. I think both the Pro and the Plus. The Pro Plus have the three cameras. Do they Remember? both shoot in log? I want the one that shoots in log, and I think that's the the max. That I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think the regular Pro only has two cameras. No, I thought it had three. No, you got to get the big guy for that. Is it confirmed that those would work? I could see Apple getting in the way there. It's not confirmed, but a lot of shit does work. Like controllers... I don't know if the ones that I have work, but the controllers do. Pro work. and Pro Max both have three cameras. Because I kind of like having a smaller camera. I'm a smaller phone. Right. I mean, I imagine they both shoot in log. Which do they both have five times zoom? Oh, uh, let's see. Got to have the five times zoom. Oh, hello, Willow. We got raided by Willow Davis. Oh, hey. How you doing? Camera. Let's see. What the fuck emote is this? Is the this Pro Max guy? has five times optical zoom. I'm getting the Pro Max. And digital zoom up to 25 I'm not happy about getting a huge camera. I mean, a huge phone. I yeah. keep calling it a camera. I'm not happy about that, but I, I do, I do, do want all the camera do. features. Yeah. Gotta do what you gotta do. Gotta mm-hmm. spend $1,500 <laughs> on a phone. <laughs> this phone's kind of getting see it's seen see, like, last days. I have the same phone, phone as you, and like it has not given me any problems. My so battery's far. been so... Sh- dog shit yeah. my uh android phone that i've been using battery's incredible yeah battery lasts uh two days sometimes. i might have to do something about my ipad because i infamously replaced the screen on it myself and now like just the middle of the screen is a dead zone like it won't recognize no. touch very well <laughs> the digitizer i only up. really use it to read comics and watch youtube so it's not like a pressing matter but like it's fucking annoying when like yeah. i'm doing dishes and i need to pause the video i gotta like pound on the screen could you get an Apple Pencil? I have an Apple Pencil. Does that work? I should try that. Try that. Yeah. That might actually just work. Because uh-huh. it's Bluetooth. Okay. I don't know how it knows yeah. what... I don't know if it needs it. Di- I mean, it must use the digital. I don't know. Maybe. I, don't it's a, know. I think it's a different type because it's a different than using your finger. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anyway. I don't know when I'm getting my fucking <laughs> iPhone. Uh, Sony has been hacked. Uh, Ransomware group Ransom.vc claims to have successfully breached Sony Group and is threatening to sell a cache of data stolen from the Japanese company. While claims uh, remain unverified, Cybersecurity Connect reports that the relative ransomware newcomer has racked up an impressive amount of victims since bursting onto the scene last month. Uh, We have successfully compromised all of Sony's systems, the group claimed, on both the clear and dark nets. The dark web. Uh, We... We won't ransom them. We will sell the data due to Sony not wanting to pay. Data is for sale. According to Cybersecurity Connect, the data, uh, the group has posted some proof of hack data, although it is said that it is not particularly compelling information on the face of things. Uh, Sony has, Sony did comment saying that they are investigating the situation after the hacking group threatened to sell the alleged data. What type of data are we talking about? That would be so cool if their internal documents got leaked. <laughs> if the same thing happens. Yeah. Uh, includes what appears to be a screenshot of an internal login page, internal PowerPoint presentation, several Java files, and a file tree of the leak, which seemingly includes fewer than 6,000 files. The group listed a post date of September 28th, after which if nobody purchases the data, is presumably when Ransom.vc will publish the data wholesale. Uh, that date has come and gone, and I don't think they have posted, uh, published anything. Wow, what a bunch of pussies. Seriously. <laughs> Fucking stick to your word, dude. Yeah. Uh, Internet Ryan in the chat says, Log video recording is available in both iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. If 
five times zoom is in 15 pro max only so you're getting the pro max i kind of okay so here's the thing okay i if i were just a layman uh-huh that wants log recording mm -hmm. i would get the 15 pro regular okay but the fact that I want to make a video about the games, uh -huh. I feel like I got to get the powerful one. Uh -huh. But also, Wood is getting one. He's an Android guy. And I already told him to get, to get the Max. So if I don't get the Max, uh -huh. he's going to be mad at me. Okay. <laughs> so now I have to get the Max. Got it. Um, Bob, did you pre-order the PlayStation Portal yet? Yes. I'm pretty sure. Might need to pre-order two overly expensive gaming handheld devices. Okay, that's like a fraction of the cost. <laughs> did you also are you did you pre-order that Lenovo thing too? Or I did I did pre-order oh, Lenovo. Poor thing. guy. There's a lot going on. Yeah. It's very expensive, this job. <laughs> you know, most people who run a business, they spend a lot of money on inventory. Yeah. I spend a lot of money on fucking useless bullshit. <laughs> uh moral combat one it seems to run like absolute dog shit yeah you have uh, it on do you have it no i didn't, okay. didn't get it uh but after watching this i'm like oh, i guess i gotta get it on a ps5 or xbox uh all right just to sum up real quick i'm sure you've all it seen looks, it it looks like shit that's it all you guys say it, it doesn't just look like shit it runs like shit um it like it's laggy it stutters uh drop frames everywhere it buffers all the time um if it just looked like butt fine but it also plays like butt yeah and that's not fine which is sad because mortal kombat 11 was a great port right yeah i mean yeah. I, mortal kombat 11 looked like butt but it ran perfectly yeah. it was a it was 60 frames per second there was no slowdown or buffering it worked and it worked very well the fact that you know mortal kombat 1 doesn't live up to that standard is very disappointing I've seen also things too, like the next gen versions, the PS5 and the Series X version of Mortal Kombat 1, like does things where like you select your character and it immediately goes into the fight afterwards. On Switch, there's a pause and it's a long pause as it renders in the background. I think in terms of like a fighting game, the game just has to play smoothly. It has to play just like it does on the other consoles. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it looks pretty. It just has to, I have to be able to play my competitive game in the same way that i've been yeah. able to in, in in other on other platforms so it's a shame that Mortal Kombat one is not like that yeah uh finally uh sony announces another new marvel spider-man ps5 bundle yeah if you missed the original spider-man ps5 bundle here's your chance but guess what losers you don't get the cool face plates they you can't buy those right the face plates like like they had them for sale but i think that they're sold out yeah, I, I see them pop up every now and then, okay. like for purchase, but like they're very hard to get. But yeah, uh, this there's no price on this yet, um, and it will be available uh, when the game comes out on October twentieth. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, no price is announced yet, but I'm sure it'll cost like five fifty, which is what the other bundles. It's like have. a little cheaper, right? You know, to get it, but it's kind of dumb. Whatever. Yeah. And that's all the news. Yes, we did it. We did it. We made it through. And you know what? For the first time in a long time. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! It's back, bitches. It's back. This is from our boy Shuhei Yoshida, friend of the show. <laughs> I think he I think I've tweeted with him before. Uh it's just, <laughs> just hot dog in Iceland is so good. <laughs> and it's just the shittiest looking hot dog yeah. I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and then the shittiest looking hot dogs. Okay. So we got we got four pictures. We uh -huh. got a horrible looking hot dog yeah. with some is that brown mustard and cheese? It looks like it. And then the next slide is a far away shot of this tiny, shitty looking hot dog yeah. stand. The next shot, a closer shot of the <laughs> shitty looking hot dog stand with a woman in there who's not looking very happy. Yeah. And then the fourth and final shot is the same exact garbage looking hot dog with a bite out of it. I gotta find I found this on Instagram. It was like the world is not ready for uh for the dog hot. And it is literally it's a reverse <laughs> it, it, it's the hot it's the, the uh, meat the meat is the bun and the the bread is like the meat part. Okay. 
It's. I think maybe the world is not ready. <laughs> no. For that. Uh. Good I had time. a chicken roll last night. Oh yeah, like a pizzeria chicken roll. Like a pizzeria chicken roll, and uh, I realized that people don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh. I don't know if it's like a New York thing or like just a pizza joint. Thing. Yeah, I don't know. Well, pizza joints are like more common here than they are like yeah other places. It's uh, how would you describe a pizza roll? It's basically like it's pizza. It's like. You know, a chicken roll in particular, it's like chicken and mozzarella cheese and tomato sauce wrapped in pizza dough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? like it's a, it's crispy. Yeah. So it's like, I explained it like a calzone. Yeah. But it's, you could, it's, it's, there's some pockets. Like it's not yeah. completely closed off. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was delicious. It was great. Yeah. It's great. It was only 10 bucks. I love, I love chicken rolls. Only 10 bucks, I say. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was just in Japan fucking three dollars have a feast at 7-eleven <laughs> i had supermarket sushi today four out of ten would not recommend what what supermarket uh stop and shop okay all right you know what some supermarkets they do you know, yeah we don't got any wegmans around here no wegmans got pretty good they sushi. Got, yeah they got pretty good sushi yeah i also there's this guy on tiktok that keeps popping up who makes sushi out of the costco salmon <laughs> The I think frozen Costco yeah. salmon, yeah. It is so nice to walk into a sub. Like, oh, I'm not going to eat for another two hours. I need something real quick. Let me just go to 7 yeah. Eleven and get an onigiri for $2. Yeah. You know? Now, if you go to a 7 Eleven and get an onigiri for $2, you're going to get chlamydia. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're uh, uh, talking to, I don't know, last week? What fucking week are we in? I don't know. Uh, f- we're going to talk to people who left comics on the Wolf Den podcast uh, video on YouTube.com slash Wolf Den podcast uh, from s- back in September. Yes. Happy Impressions says, have you guys had a chance to see the Gran Turismo movie yet? I loved it, and my husband liked it, despite not being into video games. I heard that it's good. I don't know what reviews people are reading, but like okay. I, I've not I've not heard good things. I've heard it's so, basic. I haven't heard from reviewers. I've heard from people okay. who have seen it, and and the consensus seems to be it's better than I expected. Okay, I've heard mm-hmm. I've heard it's a very basic like underdog story, you yeah. know, from rags to riches type deal. The problem so. is if I'm gonna watch a movie, it's got to be fucking amazing. Yeah, I'm not wasting my time with the with the basic yeah. ass movie i know uh f- i did hear there's one like change because it's based on true story and there's one change to the true story that's actually very egregious because it involves like somebody actually dying in real life oh yeah wait does the what w- no so all right i'll spoil alert for the gran turismo movie uh in real life the the main character was involved in a race where somebody died oh okay and that happened like later in his career they changed it so that that event happened in the beginning of his career and they use it as a catalyst for him eventually winning the big race at the end. Oh, okay. Which is kind of messed up if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, it's a little weird. So, uh, Caleb Fox, I don't know if this is the real one or the fake one. I don't know. <laughs> uh, says, we got a solo Bob show a few weeks back. We'd love to see a solo Will show, even if all the topics are random nerd culture things I know nothing about. You came very close to one the past two weeks because I did almost break in here once. And I could show you how to use everything it's I, just a little it's a little complicated it, it got to a point where i almost tested out how to do it from home oh because that I, would probably be much easier yeah because i have the login information to twitch so i could just if i could like set it up at home i'd be like log in and be like hey i mean you literally just put obs on there and then you're good i think i have obs on here already then you're good you yeah. just use the webcam and you got All right. hey <laughs> next time bob's in a foreign country <laughs> and i'm not gonna tell people i'm just gonna like go live <laughs> Um, still bald. Yeah, me too. Yeah, hey. says you should shop for Densha Dego accessories in Japan. I want more train content. They had a lot. I Is saw the it, PlayStation. I saw one of the PlayStation Two games a lot. Yeah, when I was there, it's very big over there. Yeah, but there was one. There's a million Densha Dego games, yeah. and there was one specifically. And you know what? Took the Yokohama line. No, 
Densha de Go Yamanote line. That's the one from the Switch game. Okay. Took okay. that line a bunch. And I was like, hey, I've done this <laughs> I know before. all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, Trevor Grover says, Pinch? It's pronounced Pinch. I swear you New Yorkers. Oh, because we were talking about the new Apple Watch. You can like pinch. You can pinch. Pinch. Yeah, you, you can pinch. pinch. We're fucking making a joke, man. <laughs> yeah. What is that for? I pinch. What pinch. is that? Isn't That's that from, from the kid, Kids in the Hall? Is it? Because, yeah, because they had a character who would like... No, it was not Kids in the Hall. But there was a character on Kids in the Hall who would like put your head in between his fingers. And like, no, you had <laughs> crush your head. I crush your head. <laughs> no, that was... Uh, I think it was like a commercial or something. I pinch. Pinch, yeah. Anyway, uh, Great Yam Chump says the Switch doesn't have an SSD. It's an EM. Oh, we got a nerd here. It's uh. an EMMC <laughs> chip. Basically, a way slower, cheaper garbage chip. Anybody who thinks the success of the Switch is going to run higher than 1080p doesn't know any better. Also, the Switch is an an anemic freak of a system. It's essentially just an Xbox 360 hardware from 20 2005 LMAO. I love seeing the enthusiasm behind new tech, but Nintendo motherfuckers really like highballing stuff that's inevitably going to disappoint with specs. Team Bob all the way with that SSD argument. I don't even remember. I, I don't know where you're at. <laughs> the reason all that. I don't know if I'm on your good side or your bad side. And I don't know what the fuck I said about the, 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 the switch. But thanks. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Oh, apparently there's an echo. Too bad. We're at in the show. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, the lower model of the Steam Deck has an EMMC chip as its storage. The lower model of the what? The 64 gig Steam Deck. That's an EMMC storage. I didn't know that. Yeah. It looks like uh, an SSD. Yes. I think you can get... I think EMMC is the type of... as like. I think EMMC is the protocol and like NVMe is the better protocol, but they're all technically SSDs because they're all solid state drives. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yes, it makes sense. Okay. I think this is it. No, no, it's 256. Never all right. mind. This Never is, mind. This is the owl I want. Yeah. So, I mean... Nintendo could theoretically make their next Switch an EMMC system, but I think it would behoove them to upgrade to SSD, even if it's like a, because you know, what's the what's the OLED? Sixty four gigs internal yeah. storage. Yeah, yeah one hundred twenty eight SSD. Like they could get that for cheap. Yeah, and and they gotta make some changes. Yeah. It, it it also needs to be more more storage. Like yeah. you, you're kidding me with with 32 gigabytes. Oh, you uh, can't yeah, can't absolutely. fucking do that. Even uh 64 gigs on a Steam Deck is egregious, but yeah. uh you can upgrade you can that upgrade pretty that, easily. Yeah. Uh, I freaking had an issue with 512 gigabytes on my Ally. I had to up, upgrade that to a yeah. terabyte. Um, Tredge linked I pinch. Let's see what this is. The here at the beach a it's a Honda Element commercial. Okay. Hold on. Am I going to be allowed to do this? I think. Yeah, I'm oh, the crab. Weekends. I don't mind telling you a few sick days. I think. It's cool. I carry their boards. Yeah. I, I, I remember yes. this now. Good times. And you thought it was a New York thing. <laughs> uh, All right. We're in the chat real quick. We got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I had... Chips and queso for dinner and a Soylent. I am going to shit. Yeah, I've been silently farting this whole time. I had to have not only my ice cream, but my son's ice cream because he didn't finish his. Fuck it, Will. Go live any random day for the month. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny. That would be funny. <laughs> um, There was that one time I uh, uh, Jackson lost a bet to me and the bet was I get to go live on his channel just whenever I want. I remember that, yeah. And uh, he was at Disney World, the 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 Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom, yeah. Yeah, he was he was on a safari, <laughs> and I FaceTimed him. Uh huh. And I was like, "Hey, give me your stream key right now." <laughs> I was like, "I'm on a safari." I was like, "I don't care, give me the stream." Key. <laughs> anyway, uh, Charlie Fenn says, "Might have missed it." 
But thoughts on the new MacBooks? My 2020 Pro suddenly has some of the USB ports not working, although the new ones actually have less than this one. I love this MacBook. I have had minimal issues with it. Yeah, I want to upgrade to an M-class MacBook very bad. I am currently don't have any money. So I'm holding off. This is my 2015 MacBook Pro that I'm running into the fucking ground. If you ever wanted a Windows computer, <laughs> we got plenty of Windows I, computers. Yeah, I know you do. If I might borrow one. There's, to a do... nice, there's a nice Windows PC that's just sitting there. Maybe if I ever do uh, do my uh, pirate streams on the Wolf Den <laughs> Twitch channel, I'll come and I'll steal one. And you run. could just take that and then you will have the whole setup. <laughs> um, But yeah, I love... This MacBook, that one, the I had the twenty. You have a twenty fifteen, right? Yeah, yeah. That one over there, that MacBook is a twenty sixteen. That thing is a piece of shit. Yeah, I have that right now running as a server, um, but I hated that one because uh, it was the first one that only had USB C ports. Yeah, uh, but this one is awesome. I, I I like it a lot. I I don't like that it doesn't have any USB A at all. But for the most part, I plug it into docks anyway. Yeah. So uh, it's awesome, and and it it's it's a fucking workhorse it 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 uh dumps through 4k footage like crazy mm -hmm. it's great um so will what's your hot take on the marvel big tweet statement on marvel wants their games to live up to full potential reportedly looking at internal shift going forward uh, yeah, I'm just reading what he sent over now. Uh, Marvel wants their games to be taken seriously. I mean, I don't blame them. You know, I yes, you have like big hits like Spider-Man. You got the the Insomniac Wolverine game coming out soon. That's going to be good. But by the same token, uh, Marvel's Avengers is getting shut down like any minute now. Uh, I don't think Midnight Suns did very well. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, underperformed. Uh, and the, and people yeah. like that one. What? People liked that. People one. like that one. Yeah. Uh, all the mobile games like aren't doing very well. You know. So I think they want to like reevaluate their gaming division. Like, put out more Spider Mans and less Avengers. It makes sense. I, I think it's one of those things where like game development is getting harder and harder, and these legacy media companies don't understand that like it's not like it was in the 16-bit era or even the ps2 era where you could like fart out a game in a year games take like five six years to make yeah we were talking about how uh game companies like to put a lot of money into individual games to hope that they make a lot of money back and marvel's yeah. doing that but in like the wrong ways yeah um where was it? Uh, Butter Crunch says, will you get the Ionia Kuhn? No, uh, I can't get all of these fucking things to come out. I gotta say no to some of them. And I'm basically only getting ones that seem different or interesting and or or at least interesting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that one doesn't seem interesting to me. Uh, and then Mecha Dragon says, hey, Bob, did you see the whole Pokemon Van Gogh fiasco with everyone riding over a card? No, let's see what this is about. Uh... Why I Pokemon fans that. stormed Amsterdam's Van Gogh Museum? Oh, did they just... They just... Oh, I think because they wanted, like, the, the Pikachu Van Gogh card, and, like, they ran out. Did they riot? Probably. Uh, multiple videos posted on YouTube captured the scene inside the museum store as frenzied fans and scalpers snatched stacks of posters, plush toys, figurines, jigsaw puzzles, and more almost immediately afterward. New listings for the highly prized promo card Pikachu with gray felt hat promo card began sprouting up on eBay. All right. Well, I mean, if you're going to sell a exclusive Pokemon card, you need some security. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Goodbye. Thanks for all right. Out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well, because we're also an audio podcast on wherever you get your podcasts from, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, the Google Store is going away, and it's going to be fucking YouTube. YouTube now so who knows wherever you listen to audio podcasts we will be there that's all you need to know but no matter where you get this show from folks 
please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Um, I forgot to thank some people. Uh, Reloran, thanks for the four months. Seesaw, thanks for the 36 months. Three years of joy. Oh my God, thanks. Milkman, yeah. Leachy, thank you for the 13 months. Sub boys, hello, how you doing? Ray Danny, thanks for the 16 months. Willow Davis, thanks for rating me with all you stupid people. And Charlie Fenn, thanks for the two months. Caught alive late here in the UK, but can renew my prime sub. Well, thanks, dude. Thank thanks you. for spending your late night in the UK with us. Uh, Welcome back. We're back. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'll see you... I can't tomorrow. Thursday. I'll see you Thursday. Hopefully, I'll fix a DS. Uh, go watch AJ. He's streaming now. Yeah. Uh, he's playing the My Hero Academia Battle Royale that I want to play. Bye. Bye.